um, for having the chat window back. Sorry about that, guys. I accidentally started the stream with my offline settings, which had higher quality. So basically, that's why you're getting the buffering, because I was trying to stream some really high quality there. So anyways, now I'm back to the, my regular streaming at 720p, and we're going, um, just for you guys watching here on YouTube, this is day 376, making Songbringer. Today I'm working on Rain, and we're chatting about some of the newest stuff and the latest update on the beta. Um, <clears throat> what's up, PMC? You're right on time, man. You just got here. All right, so yeah, Brandon Dyer, I'm really looking forward to... Uh, oh, Brandon, did you, try, did you play from Linux again? I'm wondering how that went for you with it trying to run Wine or whatever. Was that something that I need to fix with the game with Wine and Linux? Or or did, do you find a solution for that or what? What's up, Boogie? Yo. Marengia. What's up, Marengia? <clears throat> Marengia, I just got noticed that there is an icon of Songbringer in Steam from the ones people can choose. What do you what do you mean? Yeah, if you if you are you uh Well I'm not sure what you mean there. So which guy is the weaponsmith? Did you get the teleport? Here, let me show you who the weaponsmith is. Do you want me to show you who the weaponsmith is? Or would you rather figure it out on your own? I just gave you a pretty big hint there. Oh, Brandon, so uninstalling and reinstalling fixed the problem for you. Okay, well, I'll note that. I'll note that in, in what my, my mental notes or whatever. So um, so that if, if anybody does experience that in the future, I don't know why Steam... I don't know. I don't know what happened there, but I'm glad that I'm glad that reinstalling fixed it. A player avatar icon? Well, how did I get a shirt? Uh, cuz I don't have a sword. A player avatar icon. What 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 is this? What are you talking about? There's an icon of song rear in Steam from the ones people can choose. Oh, you mean that, that there's that you can if you have a personal profile? You mean on your personal profile you can choose a songbringer icon? Well, I wonder where they got that from, Morangia. That's cool. I mean I'm glad that I'm glad that somebody either made one for people or some or may, or maybe Steam is allowing it Steam just uses it? I don't know. Uh huh. PMC, something is wrong with the stream. For some reason, it's good for me, which is weird because I always get a bad stream. So something must be wrong. <laughs> My first set of Steam automatically lets you put icons for games you own as your profile icon. Oh, no, that could be it. Oh. <sighs> okay, so Teak, um. You didn't get the you didn't get the teleport. Oh yeah, so the teleport is in one of the dungeons. Well, I, don't, I shouldn't be telling you anymore. Yeah, you guys will figure it out. You guys will figure it out. If you want me to tell you more, I can definitely tell you more. But you, there's more of the game that you you can definitely encounter once you get the teleport cube. So today's topic is rain, which is I'm going to accomplish this by using a bunch of pixels. I'm just going to take some single white pixels. And I'm going to make them stretch out and then fall from the sky, hit the ground, and splash a little bit. So this is going to be a new type of particle. I have, a, I have this existing class called Particles, which um, basically is, i got everything already set up. It has a bunch of different sprites that are all pixels. 
It has like all these different settings like density and speed and width and height and opacity and color and all that. So this is all set to go. All I got to do is kind of like just uh, change the behavior of the particles to use the rain type. So uh, basically I'm creating rain here by doing some, by editing the particle system. <clears throat> There is a choose from official game avatars option. Oh, okay. I get it. Oh, right. Yeah, cool. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Yeah, we're going to make it rain today. Yeah, Teak, it's it. It's got to be in the one dungeon you skipped. Yeah. All right, so, man, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about this latest update. And also, if anybody's experiencing any crashes, I know, Teak, you, you've got some crashes, a few crashes here and there. I'm going to implement a crash reporting feature this week, too, So, because I can't reproduce your crash. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that for anybody out there on YouTube or whatever, you're interested in this project. I am going to finally put up this crash reporting feature. So hopefully Steam, I think Steam actually has the feature built in. As long as you get your game to actually spit out a crash report when it crashes, then Steam automatically uploads it and all that. So that's going to be cool. That way I can find the bugs that you guys are experiencing, but I'm not experiencing. So... How is the crash reporting feature going to work? I, I just explained it. <clears throat> yep, you just it spits out a. Are you talking about how does the how does the code actually report check that it crashes? You can actually set a crash handler. You get your your program actually has the ability to, you know, in different APIs and stuff like that, and on Windows and versus Mac and stuff like that's different. But there's ways to install crash handlers. And then as you just install a crash handler, and then when you crash, you spit out all that data about the crash into a file, and then Steam uploads a file to Steam servers and stuff, and uh, that's, that's it. Steam has an official avatar for Songbird. That's cool. Yeah, it might be a part of that Xbox One controller. Yeah. It, but it might, it might not be, too. I... I it might be. Who knows? Hell. Press something like F3 plus B to pull up a window to send an error report. Oh, now that's kind of cool too, Zilton. That's a great idea. Yeah. Like you press a button and it kind of sends a report of the state of the game right then. That's a really great idea. It might take some time to, to make, but I'm gonna put this on my ideas or on the on my Trello list because this is uh, I'll put this on the soon one. Bug reporting feature. That's pretty important, especially as the game gets into um, you know more of these it's supposed to be mature right the game's supposed to be like <laughs> mostly bug free at this point right but it's it's because there's so many new features still and i think this is going to be la one of the last weeks where there will be basically this after this week i think the game's going to be feature complete jib's going to have an item where he can attack um the flasks should get done this week there's going to be a defensive item Yeah, so basically the game's going to be feature complete this week. <laughs> That's pretty exciting. God dang. Yeah, I did something. <laughs> uh, I finally did a Zilton does something. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let me jump into this rain. Um, I'm going to create an entity when, it, when we create the area. A 
Okay, so after it does everything, it calls it start, light beams, setting auto Z, draw map. Let's do it before this stuff. And here's where it creates light beam. This is a good place for it right here. Okay, so we're going to create some rain by, uh, we're going to do, so I don't know if I'm just an idiot, but I'm stuck in a dungeon. I'm locked in a room with four pillars, three of which you can beat down and one that you push once. I have no idea what to do. Oh my gosh, Brandon, do you have, is it in that same room? I experienced the same thing last night. Um, in that same room, do you have some, some pillars that look like they have like a, a concave thing in the top of them? Like as if they're like little altars or little th things that can hold fire. Cause that's what they are. There's these little things that you light on fire and they can prevent you from, uh, it's a bug I already got noted on my list here somewhere here fire pill no well, it's already on my list but um basically you need to use fire on those pillars to open that door or um or just save your game and restart the dungeon so yeah sorry about that that is a bug i think i think that's what you're experiencing it tell me tell me if it's not though i'd i can I can uh, put another bug on my list or whatever. No, there's no such thing as pushing in the wrong direction. Yeah, any direction you push works um, for now. You know, I might do some advanced puzzles later where you have to push in certain directions and like stuff like that. But for now, there's only really simple basic puzzles where all you have to do is push a pillar. And there's, like I said, there's going to be a lot more puzzles in Songbringer once. Once I get up and going with the content part of it all. Is the rain just going to be an aesthetic thing or are you planning on making it have an impact on gameplay? For example, certain kinds of enemies could be more common or less common during rainfall. I don't know yet. I don't know yet. I was planning on just doing an aesthetic thing here at first. And then, you know, maybe adding some just changes to the game later. By the way, you the game does actually change a little bit now as far as night goes. Finally. So yeah, there's certain things that can only happen at night now in Songbringer. And I don't want to say too much about it. There's already an achievement about it, so I don't want to ruin it for y'all. Because once once you find this achievement, you'll be like, Oh my god, I found it! I found out how to get this achievement. The achievement's called Friend of Durin, if anybody's interested. How do you light fire? You need, you need a fiery device. You need either the lighter or... Um, or a fire top hat, fire sword, fire, um, fire bombs, you know, anything that has, has fire crafted with it. But usually you would just do use the lighter. What's up, Born Snipe? Like this. Oh, whoops. That's the teleport. Bafu pizza delivery. Mm -hmm. Here's the lighter. You get it in the second dungeon, the swordless dungeon. He's thinking lights up on fire. Uh, Teak, the we encountered also a major bug. We pushed the pillar in a room with just the pillar in it and it didn't unlock the doors. Yeah, that's exactly what I was just talking about there with that other one. Um, there's Sometimes there's a room. It only seems to happen when you're too fast. Oh, also, is this was this with the, ver the version you played this weekend or did you play it like as of today, like as since last night? Because I did fix a really important bug about puzzles not activating. Remember the fire, like the sword in the swordless dungeon, you could light those things on fire. If there was already playing some dialogue or whatever, and you lit some fire, and you activated the puzzle, you solved the puzzle, but it didn't actually save it as uh, saved or whatever. So there's uh, that's related to the pushing the pillars too. It's all the puzzle system. So there's a bug fix in the puzzle system or system already. But I, it could either be that that it's already fixed, or that you had to light some fire. So that's one other one I have a bug for to fix. But you said it only seems to happen when you're too fast. <laughs> Larson. <laughs> Both of the things are lit already. 
Can you tell me what um can you tell me what world seed you're in, Brandire, and um and what dungeon? If you tell me what world seed and dungeon, I'll go there right now and we'll try and see what's wrong with it. Okay, so, so Teak, same thing. Let's play your seed too. Let's um what's what's your world seed you're playing? And what dungeon are you in? And I'll try and go to that same exact room and, and figure out both of these situations. Because right now, this is this is what both of you guys are reporting this. So maybe this is a good time to handle this. A H O V W. Okay, cool. In the dungeon of the winged lady. Yeah, but there's multiple dungeons of winged ladies. So what? What? Um, what number is on your uh your winged lady dungeon? Basically, all you gotta do is go to your map, and it'll show you what dungeon number you're in. Just go to your go in the game, press the select button or whatever button brings up your map and your inventory, and right there on the top of your map, it'll say what dungeon number you're in. I need to know that dungeon number. So, um, it's in dungeon. Okay, so T has his dungeon four, or it's level eight. Okay, I'll go there first. A H O V W X. And dungeon. Hey, okay, so tell me about where to go here, too. I'll start looking around for it. You said it was a dungeon. You said it had four pillars or two? Is it this one? So that one worked for me. To the right? Okay. To the right. Did it have four pillars? I think you said it had four pillars. Oh, here we go. Yeah, this is totally it. You gotta have fire to get through this. Right now. This is a bug. This is definitely a bug. I need you need to I have this on my list already, but there see these things right here? These are meant to be lit on fire. And so the game thinks that you once I once I push this pillar, or whatever pillar it was, I I kind of got lucky there to push that one, but um, uh, whatever, it, the game thinks that this room is still not complete yet. So I've got to fix this bug. But all you would have to do to fix it to oh shit, I've used the teleport. Damn it. <laughs> He's got the shirt on. Save it with this lighter. Oh, but now, oh, damn it, now I gotta use the light. Damn it. Uh. So right, so you push one pillar. Oh shit! Did it, now I'm locked into this room because. Oh my god, there's another bug. You can teleport and get stuck. Okay, maybe that's what happened to one of you guys. Did you guys tr did you guys teleport? Here, let me add this to this bug to the list here. If you teleport out of a stuck or a puzzle room where you already pushed the pillar, it won't be pushable 
when you come back. Maybe it was actually already activated though, and all I had to do was just use the fire. Yeah, so you didn't teleport, right, okay. So there, I push it and use the, the lighter. So there you go, that's what opens up the doors. So yeah, your, your solution right now is just to save your game and, and start over. Um, and then go get go get the lighter. <laughs> and so you need the lighter. You're, you're at a pretty advanced part of the game here. You're at level 8 without mm. having been to level 2. So that's kind of why you you don't have this yet. You should you should have already come across the teleport cube or the lighter, you know. So because because there's many many ways to craft fire, but the lighter is the most basic, easy way to get that get fire. Okay, so let's go to this other one. Um, Teeks is one. Tyrio Dungeon Four. Tyrio, Dungeon 4, and where did you say to go? You go to the right and two up. All right, we got it. Okay, here we are. We have a regular door over here. Regular door there, but a locked door down here. Which way did you come into this room from? <clears throat> yeah, the door opens for me. Shit, I don't know what happened to you guys. It might have been this, it, it, wait, you played this weekend though, right? Yeah, Teak, this might have been, I think you were playing this weekend. Um, and you weren't playing the very latest version with there's there's a really important bug fix where basically if you if you were came into this room and you had some dialogue that was already playing and like your your characters were saying stuff um, and then you went and pushed this pillar um, it wouldn't activate at all so that none of this would this, these doors wouldn't open because basically it was there was a bug that I fixed this weekend. So I think it I think this might already be fixed for you guys. This particular situation. Okay, so let's what do we got now. Oh, another Xbox One bug. The game rebinds select to whatever button was bound before that without me pushing any button. The, the game rebinds. Okay, so Teak, when you're talking about rebinding, are you talking about it automatically binding, like you didn't even have to do anything, or are you talking about when you go and you set your set your player controls manually? And are you talking about player one, or are you talking about player two? Yeah, it was a time. Yeah, I think it was a timing bug. I think I, th I think that one's fixed. Okay, so I'm gonna create a a blank entity. Doesn't even need anything but a render component, actually. And then I want to add particles to this entity. Particles create. Roof debris. What's a good particle to emulate? I guess it really doesn't matter. Uh, 
All right, let's do these. I'm creating some particles. We're gonna start with something crazy random just so I can see that the particles are even working. Let's keep the color white for a minute. Yeah, new achievements. There's 17 new achievements, and there's going to be better ones. The God Particle? What's the God Particle? I'm not connected to Steam right now. The God Particle. That sounds like a cool name for one. If I try to bind the keys with the Xbox One controller. So you're manually binding your keys, right? It's not, it's not automatic. It takes the right trigger as select without me pressing a button. Sounds like I gotta get one of these. Order a uh, Xbox One controller. Test right trigger. Oh, I know what it's doing. Yeah, so Xbox controllers, the way they work is that um, the right triggers, you're talking about the bottom trigger, right? There's the top trigger button, and then there's the actual right and left trigger things, and they're actual axes, right? They have a, they start at like zero, and they go, you know, 5,000, 10,000, 15,000, 32,000, or whatever. They go all the way up to a certain value, and they go all the way back. So that might be that your tr your trigger is like kind of, glitching out and it thinks that that axis axis is down but I'll have to test this out in person to really make it work right test the right trigger getting set to select without pressing anything all right. Select is the one. Yeah, the bottom one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, for the Higgs boson? I still don't get how it's related to an achievement, though. Sorry, I, I had a long night last night publishing the uh, publishing this latest update. I was like up till five a.m. Free parking. How many controls have I purchased now? Oh my god! Four. I guess there's only four, but still, it feels like a lot of four. My favorite one is the PlayStation controller. I love the shit out of the PlayStation controller. This thing's dope. I used to play with the, I used to have only the Xbox controller for a long time, and I slowly got to like it. But then when I found the PlayStation controller, I'm like, oh my god, the, the action on these, the, the uh, the what do you call it like the joysticks or whatever what are those called the sticks the action on the sticks is awesome on the playstation controller it's really tight yeah oh yeah so i want this to be the whole area size so i'm creating an i'm creating an entity with some particles that covers the whole area And let's just see what happens.
You fix the menu selection being too sensitive? Uh, right, the analog six. The menu selection being too sensitive. I don't remember that. I don't remember fixing that. I'm glad. I'm glad it did, but I don't. I don't know how I did that. Yeah, I need more. I need to get. I need to get a Steam controller, an Xbox One controller. I really should have a PlayStation Three controller just to test on. I'm sure there's others I need. I should be having. But those will get me started, right? Those are the main ones, I think. The Steam controller, the PlayStation controller, and the... Alright, yeah, so we got some particles. Alright, so that's that's almost like rain as well. It's just like really slow rain. It's like a very soft snow, actually. That's snow! That's actually snow! We have snow. Alright, well... That was quick. Go to the, let's go to the overworld for this. I'm going to go to this area. I want to show you guys something cool. You guys want to see something sweet? Actually, I shouldn't tell you. I shouldn't show you this. I can't show you guys this. It'll totally ruin stuff if I show you this awesome secret, which there's an achievement for, and you could earn on your own and be like, Yeah, I figured it out. This seems like an okay place to be right here. We'll save here. Oh wait, would, would rain look pretty cool here? Yeah, rain would look pretty damn cool here. So let's do it here. All right, so start to make this look like rain. This is actually kind of a good, this is kind of snowy right here. Let's call that particle snow. Save that for a minute. Okay, so let's make rain. Show it or we strike. <laughs> I could show it, but I wouldn't, I couldn't, ex I don't want to explain it. Also, okay, I'll show you something that you'll be like, all right. It's kind of the same thing. I'm showing you the same thing, but just not showing you the really, really secret part that you will, you, that you will eventually find yourself and be like super rewarded for. So I'll show you a different, I'll show you a different aspect of the same kind of secret. PlayStation 3's controller triggers are treated as buttons instead of axes. So that's that's usually good for um So yeah, there's new types of secret paths. Check these out. There might be one here. Yeah, here's one. So you see what I just did there? I just walked along this wall here. And there are sometimes secret paths. I think there's another secret right here. So yeah, there's the there's the secret paths like that where you can walk through the wall. And then there's secret paths where you can bomb the wall. They're totally different. They're not you can't get both of them at the same time. Uh you're still getting crashes? Okay, I think what was going on, I think what just happened there was, um, I lost that position, oh well. Okay, it's fine, we'll put some, oh yeah. So I think it's putting, it's doubling up the snow. Yeah, see now there's two snows here. Is there? Wait a minute, maybe there's not. Oh, maybe it is okay. Jib's just chilling. Because I got him in AI mode. Jib, be, a, be an AI! Or he was in human mode. Okay, let's start with rain. I want that stuff to fall faster. Or which one's the speed? Always forget. Let's just like copy all that. So we can see what all these parameters mean. 
crying out loud. C++? Strike temporarily postponed. <laughs> yeah, Boogie, you don't have to do anything, man. Don't take that stuff from him. I know, yep, 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 yep. It's not, I mean, Hyperlight Drifter didn't do that kind of sneaker first, but yeah. There's there's gonna be, I want that same kind of feeling that you get in Hyperlight Drifter, right? You in Hyperlight Drifter it's pretty neat that you can explore and find secrets and stuff, but the one drawback to that I found in playing Hyperlight Drifter's secrets is that you, they weren't that varied. There was there was kind of always this like rote thing that I always did every time I was in a new room. I'd be like, okay, explore all the edges. Okay, maybe I can zoom off this edge and find a new a secret platform. Or maybe there's something I could press the Y button. So it's like it, after a while, I got into kind of a pattern of how I checked for secrets. So I want, I want, um, I just want there to be enough variety in the secrets that it's you never really get into a pattern about it. But maybe, maybe that's just how games are. Maybe there really isn't any way to get around that. Like even if you had four or five different ways to walk secret paths, you would still have to try them all, right? Which would mean you'd get into a pattern. Oh, this is a really important question. Does anybody else have any thoughts on this? Is that right? Like right now in Song Mirror, you can bomb through a wall, you can walk through walls, you can... Um, you can burn things to open up certain secret entrances. Uh, you can use your cactus to view some secrets. But yeah, in the end, I think you no matter what, you just get in a pattern, right? Is there a pattern to secret bombable rooms? No, there's no pattern. Oh, I guess there kind of is, yeah. Yeah, secret rooms do have to touch other rooms. But no, not two, at least two other rooms. In Songbringer, a secret room doesn't necessarily have to be... Let me show you a few secret rooms. Let's look at the actual debug layout, you'll see. Uh, no, there's no there's no actual pattern like that, I guess, because yeah, there's no like uh, let's find this this hidden room here. Where is it? Here it is. Here's the hidden room. Yeah, so this hidden room um, doesn't have has only one connection, and these dot dot dots represent a secret path that you can walk through the wall. And the blanks, if you're, oh no, this has two, this, this one has two openings, because this one's blank right here. These blank openings represent bombable walls. So basically this one has two connections, but it's not guaranteed that it's always going to have two connections. So you really never know where the game's going to place the secret room. It can go, it can attach to, a secret room can literally attach to almost any other room. And it doesn't have to attach to more than one room. So... There may be a pattern though that I'm not seeing. Like see this one right here, this one is a hidden room that you, you can only bomb through a wall to get to. And it only has one connection. Yeah, and there's it's never like at the end of, it's it's never like you always find a secret room at the end of a hallway or anything like that. No, it's not like that. Yeah, they did have a lot of those kind of secrets in Hyperlight Drifter, right? And they did, yeah, that's what I'm saying. They, it kind of got a little predictable, didn't it? There isn't any way to get around player developing a methodical way of going about playing. You can only affect how complex that method gets and how long it takes before the player figures out a pattern to follow. Yeah. Huh, it's just, I'd like, to, I'd like to, one of these years, it might not be this year, it might not be this video game, but it would be sweet to start seeing some more emergent gameplay. You know, like if, Finding ways to make the game make the games so that as a player you can change how you play. You can change how you find solutions. You can change how secrets work. 
based on how you play, you know, like um, true emergent gameplay is, is something that I don't think we really have seen at all, really, in games. Unless, unless maybe I'm just playing the wrong games. I don't know. I don't see how to do that in Songbringer right now. Like, I don't see how I could change, how, how the, the game could change itself. Like, change its systems. It's a really complicated thing to change, right? If you're to change the way secrets work, you're changing the system. So, like, I don't see how this, this game could change its systems. Unless it had a whole bunch of systems that it wrote, and it chose those systems at runtime. What about the boss room? Yes, there kind of is a pattern to the boss room, Zilton. If you want to know the pattern to the boss rooms, they are always north. So when it comes to boss, at least for now, because they have these big old, in, like, intimidating huge doors, and they always, those big doors always have to face north. So yes, the boss, this, see this? Here's the, the big B here is the before boss room. This, this B is the, bef the boss room, and this G is the goal room. It's north, right? See that? This north. But the the goal room doesn't necessarily have to be north of the boss room. It's just that the the boss room has to be north of the before boss room. And you'll find that everywhere in the whole game. See this? Um, yeah, all these dungeons, everywhere you look, there's always the... It doesn't... Yeah, so that's one pattern. And I guess the other pattern to boss rooms is that you can never... There's never any secret paths into a boss room or the goal room. So that's something too. There are patterns to how so how Songbringer does its dungeons and and Overworld, but I, I'm trying not to have too many of them. I don't want the game to be too predictable. Uh huh. It would take the top five levels you died on the most and make them harder for challenge mode. <laughs> Interesting. Whoa. I know, born to snipe. That would be hella hard to de to debug, wouldn't it? Salad Dogs, I think immersion gameplay is a really difficult thing to create, especially if the game in question has explicit goals, right? It seems to me that sandbox games are the best suited to immersion gameplay, true. Because part of that emergence comes from the player deciding what goals they want to pursue, right? Yeah, okay, right, right, yeah. But I'm, I'm talking about in games like this, like a like an RPG that that has specific goals, you know, yeah, it's like it has a specific thing, you're supposed to beat the game, right? It's not like a sandbox game where you can just kind of play however you want. I'm talking about how do you how do you emerge how do you put emergent gameplay into Zelda? You know how do you put emergent gameplay into Metroid? That's what I'm that's what I'm curious about. I'd like to see that eventually. Eventually, I'd like to see that in my own video game. Some one of these years, maybe 20 years in the future, I'll be like, oh, oh, this is how we do it. Nice. <laughs> One point. Oh, Zilton, that's not too hard. Yeah, just changing the game a little bit, the challenge level, the difficulty, based on if you die at a certain point too many times. That's that's you're not actually changing the gameplay at that point. You're just changing the parameters of the game. You know, how many how much health does an enemy have? How many how many how much damage does your player do? Stuff like that. That's that's like emergent parameters. I guess those could those are yeah, that's emergent parameters, but like emergent gameplay where the actually the way you play the game changes. <laughs> all right, so all all that all that well let's get some particle speed. Where the hell is the speed? Here we go. Float speed, vec negative one speed. Let's make these faster. And their opacity too. Same thing with their opacity. So their opacity starts at zero or 255. All these opacities, let's keep these up high. And particle scale, let's put that down to 1.0. What's up, Kovarni? Cool for the final boss? Yeah, totally. The only kind of emergent gameplay I could think of of a game like Songry would be something like 
some kind of side effect of how interaction with the environment works. Like maybe you can mess with an enemy in some unexpected and amusing way. Yeah. All right, so now we just have faster snow, which is all right. You know, this is kind of getting there. So what? I, but see, what's going on here is that it's it's random. It's like as the as the particle is falling, it's randomly moving to the left and the right. I don't want that rain. Is has a constant velocity, so there's nothing random about it. So now I get, to get I need to start poking around in the code for um, just poke around in some code, huh? <laughs> just poke around in this particles code. All right, so instead of smoke, let's call that rain, and let's see if it breaks. First of all, just by changing the particle type. I think the particle types, I don't have anything coded yet for rain, so let's see if it actually uses some defaults or whatever. Oh no, there we go, cool. It just made them go straight down. No, it didn't, no, they're still randomly moving. Okay, so it's just doing the same thing as smoke. All right, so let's go into the particle code. extensions all right so if you're just joining the stream I'm working on creating rain today and we're chatting about things in the latest beta update for songbringer and and emerging gameplay so when it creates these particles or when it when it runs the particles let's go to where it runs the particles here we go it's like looping over particles oh wait wait where does it set the kind Kind, kind. But when it creates the, the motes. Oh, right. So it's just doing this. If kind equals random, do this. Otherwise, keep within a certain area. Oh, yeah. I would have thought that would have fixed it. Okay, let's find out if that this type particles K kind rain is even getting applied. So kind is for this. So then with this variable. Oh right, it's just p. Okay, so particles. Kind is for. Looks good. All right, so I'm gonna set a breakpoint here and on enter. And let's see if this, yeah, this is the kind four. All right, good. Create motes. What's up, Protus? This is C++. I'm coding up, I'm making rain right now. I'm making this, this is a video game kind of like Zelda. I'm just making some, making it rain in the environment. Yeah, don't don't listen to Zilton. He's trying to try to tell you lies. <laughs> I'm an orc. <laughs> is one of the hardest languages to learn? Definitely not. No, no, no. Brainfuck is a hard language to learn. C++ is relatively easy compared to brainfuck. 
Yeah, it's C++ is not that hard, especially if you start learning with C. If you start with C, it, I think you'll have a really, really good time learning languages in general. C is kind of, is really important. It'll teach you some of the basics that you need in just about any language. You're having a heck of a time learning Spanish? It's hard, right? I forget the verbs all the time. I'm not very good at Spanish. My Spanish is muy, mm, muy malo. See, see how long it took me to come up with the word bad? <laughs> All right, uh, okay, so create modes. We're gonna create a total of 105. Got some rotation. Ooh, we could set rotation for all these. M type camo big. M set random type. Okay, so I can play around with this stuff here. I can like change the type to be, instead of being bigger particles, like the, the rain can always be a consistent size. Just changing the scale too, so let's have a higher Y scale, so the rain will appear longer. I'll do that here. But what I'm particularly interested in is when it actually runs. The particles update method. Ancient Greek. Really? All right, is this the same particles? This is kind one. Nope. Oh, uh, wow, there it is. Part kind four. Awesome. And yeah, it does run this code. And it doesn't set any random vector. So it must be that it had a random vector to start with. Vec. Zero, negative one. No! All right. Let's get rid of these breakpoints. Actually, let's just... Disable the breakpoints. All right, so first of all, I want the moat if it's K kind rain. The moat type is always going to be K moat normal. And its scale. Wait, does it ever change scale? Opacity changes, range changes. Yeah, we don't need to change scale. Cool. We'll keep the scale the same the whole time. Oh yeah, see, it does set a random vector for the beginning. Oh, this is it. Kind is not equal to k kind rain. And let's set one more thing. Ah, 
Oh, we already had this and for waterfall. Man, waterfall is kind of the same thing as rain. That'll create a really long sprite randomly. And then we're not going to set any initial randomness to the, the vector. Nice. We're getting there. We're getting close to having rain. <laughs> Oh no, Zilton's going crazy. I wonder why all of the rain's though at the halfway up. Why is it like up there? Probably it's positioning it. So area when it creates these particles, what's the position? Oh, let's just make sure it's zero. Particles dot set position y to zero. <laughs> Can I ban him? Who? Yeah, we have rain on the whole screen now. But the problem is the rain isn't like landing now it's not hitting the ground so this is where the actual movement of rain is going to start to apply so it needs to each rain particle needs to have its own like maximum distance that it travels or whatever And in fact, the area, it needs to be twice or one and a half times as big as the area size. So now we should have more height on the rain. So it'll go, it'll stretch off the top of the screen and that'll give us room for the particles of rain that are gonna be just hitting the top of the screen. Okay, so now now we just need it to, so each particle needs to have its own specific distance that it travels. And the particles know how tall they are. They have a height variable. So right now, the way the, that the existing particles work is that it just, um, as soon as the particle gets to the edge of the area that contains all of it, it um, immediately wraps it around to the other side of the, the area. So as the particle, fall, the particle of rain falls, as soon as it hits the bottom, it goes boom, it just puts it back up somewhere at the top at random. It randomly puts a new X position. So... What it needs to do is be smarter about how far it moves. Like it goes only like halfway down, hits the ground, does like its ground animation or whatever, and then puts it back up to the top, halfway down, halfway down, halfway down. So.
All right, so we need to abstract away these height variables. Height, height, width, width. So I'll make those into max variables. So like this will be max height, max width. And then we can change the max height, math, max width depending on the type of part, type of particle system or whatever. What's up, Toby Peters? And there needs to be ripples. Of course there needs to be ripples for sure. That's going to be the easy fun part too, the ripples. Because we already got all the ripple code. Just gotta be, as soon as the particle lands there, bam, ripples! What's up, Space My Name? I'm working on rain. <laughs> Loaded. <laughs> Bopfu reloaded. Is there any way to know the current health of a boss? No, there's not. There's not. Okay, so So we'll have a max high and a max width. And then when we're resetting the particle, we just re reset to the max height, max width. So rain can have a different distance that it falls. And I think what that's going to do is put a uniform height on it all. So that means that the rain's going to get chopped off at a certain point. But that's okay. We'll, we'll randomize it here in a sec. Puddles? Yeah, there'll be puddles too. That's the plan. <laughs> Put it on half the screen to this way. Yeah, I'm excited about puddles too because puddles are going to give me a chance to make very small bits of water that allow the game to use its cool reflections, right? The reflections are pretty sweet. It's cool to see your reflection in the water. And so it just be, it'll be really nice to have um, these reflections all over the place, like puddles everywhere where you can see your reflection and also hear your foot splashes too. Like if I go into God mode here and run under this water, it's got like these, you know, the, the ripples, but it's also got the little splashy footsteps. And that'll be pretty nice to add splashy footsteps hmm. onto actual puddles on the, the regular, you know, ground. So why did it do half the width? I guess it depends on this, huh? Pause x is less than x0. Oh, no, wait, this is, uh... Okay, let's just ignore the width for a minute. I'm just gonna focus on the height. So if it's rain, it'll just have half the height potential. Dungeon two, number two doesn't seem to make any sense. You can't figure out what you're supposed to do. Do you want me to help you? Or do you want to figure it out yourself? Hmm, it's still not doing, it's still not showing it. Let's see what it looks like when it's zoomed out of it. It is a land bridge to nothing. You mean you mean there you're stuck in that level? It's like you, there's nothing you can do. There's nowhere you can go. Is it still the same seat? Gee, how flesh trouble. Let's 
I'll zoom the camera out a little bit so I can see all this rain. Meh. <clears throat> <laughs> Zoom out a little more. Same seed. Sorry, okay, what was your seed again? A-H-O-V-W-X, is that right? Shit, if I actually remembered that. I'll even take away the lighter. Or well, I can still show you how it how it works without taking away the lighter. Is this right? A H O V W X. It is. Oh my god. Wow. That's that's always all intuition right there. I did not consciously know that. So where is this land bridge to nothing? Yeah. It seems fine here. I think the rain is adding up. There's like more rain, more rain. Why is that cactus on fire? <laughs> the cat there was a pillar on fire. Oh, it was a green pillar, that's probably why. Yeah, this is dungeon two. Oh, you're talking about dungeon three, maybe. Oh, dungeon two to the left? Yeah, it's you just go to the left, there's a there's a corridor room. I mean look at you're talking about right here, right? I go to the left right here. Yeah. So what's wrong? Oh, I see what's going on here. So the rain needs to add to its position because it starts at zero, which is the bottom, and then it goes to the top, which is like I'm setting to be half height. So we need to add in this difference. Inside Dungeon 2, there's a land bridge to a land mass with nothing on it. Where? Where is that? I just ran around that whole dungeon to every room and I didn't see it.
Uh, I'm trying to decide whether it's this one or this one. Okay, let's comment out these X's. Let's see if I think it's this one. And then I think it's, I'm just verifying that I'm on the right page with with this. I think that it's, if I change this one here, comment on that one, that it still works. Yeah, cool. Okay, so it's this bit of code. Now I just gotta make this. Uh, pause.y plus equals height. Oh, why zero needs to change? And why one? But not any of this. I think. Ah. Uh. Kind equals K, kind rain. I think Y zero needs like half the height. But I think that might need to depend. There it goes, cool, that's half the height, nice. What the hell happened there? Oh, I zoomed out too far. The shadows are very glitchy. Which mode are you playing in? For your graphics settings, you got two. You got two options. You got graphics awesome or graphics okay. So I, I would need to know which one you're using. That's still too high. Oh, we might not be able to do this with this dungeon. Oh yeah, I can do it. All right, yeah, so all I need to do is make that the Y0 and the Y1 different, depending on which particle it is. Why not children's drawing? Yeah, Brandon, there's still there's there there's definitely a bug with the shadows still. I got it on my list to try and fix. It's a tricky one, but I'm actually going to be upgrading the whole sat shadow system. 
there's some there's a shadow pixelation bug and there's another shadow bug where sometimes the shadows turn a different color and but i'm going to be redesigning this whole system so i don't think uh, it's it, i should worry too much about this system working perfectly just yet all right so i'm gonna make a const float a rig Oh, I gotta I'm amazed how people just supported your project with 15,000. How much time did you put on this work of art? Oh, thanks. That's a compliment. Okay. All right. Thanks, man. Thanks. I appreciate it. Uh, how much time did you put on this work of art? Thank you. This has been a year and a half now that I'm making this video game. Uh, okay, so I got this original X0 and original Y0. I'm making rain right now. I'm gonna make the X, so each time it goes to a different moat, it'll have a different percentage. And then I can apply that to the height. So if it's rain, it can have a different X0 and a different X1 and all that. Actually, let's just get all these variables created. So x0. What's up, Taiho? Thanks, thanks. Um, yeah, so X0 is original X0, Y0 is a rig, Y0, if kind is rain, then we're going to create a percentage, so this is float, P percentage or whatever is float count over float motes dot size. And then, so that this is how much we're going to change the reins x0, y0, and all that. And then this, of course, x1 is going to be x0 plus width y1 is y0 plus height. Okay, so now all we got to do is modify x0 and y0 based on the rain. Just lurking in your stream in my spare time as usual. Right on, man. Uh, so x0 is plus equal p times height times 9 or so. y0, same thing, p, but this y0 is going to be, oh no, yeah, y0 is height, x0 is width. Yeah. 
And I think I don't need to change any of this. Let's turn off that for a minute. Nice, it's working. So as the particles fall, they all have a different distance that they can fall and they're hitting the ground and disappearing. So now all I need is an effect. When it hits the ground, it needs to like fade out and then be reborn in the clouds. Start again. All right, great. So basically, I, don't, I didn't need this or that. Let's turn off the zoom out for a minute. Cool. This is great. We got some of these particles hitting the ground. Now to make them bounce a little bit. So when they hit the ground, they need to bounce. So I got an idea. To make them bounce, it's almost like the, the, the particle of rain needs to go into a different mode. Like it needs to be like, oh, I'm bouncing now. So either it has, it might need to have acceleration actually so that it actually bounces and does a nice little velocity parabola thing. I'm not exactly sure. I'm gonna take a quick break. I'll be right back.
All right, so instead of implementing a complex like physics system or whatever for this raindrops, we're actually going to cheat a little bit and use a Cocos 2D action. Um, so basically when the particle of rain hits the ground, it's going to run a quick little action where it bounces and fades out, and then the, the original process of moving the rain and stuff will continue. <laughs> Feels like a lot of four. Nice one. What's up, Red Sands? Lava Rain? Magma Rain? Jai Lero, what's up? What's this game about? This is like Zelda, but it's procedurally generated. So it can change every time you play it. You enter six letters when you create a world, and that your entire world is generated based on those six letters. So that means that you can create the same exact world by entering the same exact six letters. It's like a code for the world. So when you want to, let's say you want to do a speed run, you want to play with a friend or whatever. You want to do a speed run, you want to get the same world every time, you can play the same letters. But if you want a brand new world, you can enter to the different six letters and play a whole different world. A whole different game of Zelda. But it's not Zelda. So if the moat is currently running an action, I'm just gonna continue. Don't process a moat that is already it's already doing stuff. But that's skipping the count plus plus. What is it even using the count for? Just that. All right, let's put count of plus plus at the beginning. And then this puts this count over mode size with mode size. All right, yeah, that makes sense anyways. This could be, th technically this should be count minus one over mode stop size minus one. That's fine. <laughs> hey, no worries, man. No worries, no worries. I I didn't write bot foo, so I don't I don't know how he works. But if you want to say sorry, say sorry to to Boogie. To, but don't, but uh, I'm sure he'd be cool about it. I'm sure Boogie can go in there and just delete all the quotes that it don't make any sense, anyways. If he wants. <clears throat> Okay, the next thing I want is for the sprite to automatically renew itself, or for the mode to re renew vector if doesn't have one. If m.vec is zero, m m.vec equals, I think there's an overall vec. Yeah, there's an overall vec. <laughs> Why would you do that, Red? <laughs> oh. Everybody uses the. Oh man, you guys are making work for Boogie. You guys do realize that Boogie has actual work to do, right?
Um, yeah, okay, good. There's an overall vector for the for the particle class. So yeah, I'm restoring the vector once you once it it doesn't have one. So so here's how it's gonna work. When it when a particle of rain detects that it's hit the ground, which is gonna be right here, um, rain bounces. So if uh, kind equals k kind rain, we're gonna bounce. Um, which will be running an action, and then set the vector to zero. So it's going to run this action, and then once it's done with the action, it'll restore its vector. Oh, wait, 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 wait. We don't want to restore the vector here. We want to restore the vector here. And this is going to be bounce. Else, okay. So now we just go m dot sprite run action bounce. There's no bounce, huh? I know there's a bound or jump by jump so jump by yeah I think it's jump by not jump to jump by let's say like a half second maybe one second I don't know no half a second it's jump to position okay so we're gonna jump to um, D Rand F No, D rand F, not D rand F01. When did this chat use a Nightbot? Oh, a long time ago. I used to have Nightbot or whatever. Everybody's like, you don't have Nightbot? What? You got to get Nightbot, man. And so I got Nightbot, and then I'd never use it again because you had to go, like, run it every time you streamed, which was just way too much work. So it's going to jump to position, like, randomly 10 pixels or so and randomly five pixels maybe and a float height uh, the whole the height of the jump will be let's say 10 pixels at first this might be a lot and then one jump okay this might work let's see if this works then we'll see the the particles of rain bouncing off the ground All right, Red Sand, see you, man. <laughs> what is this? This is like watching Fantasia or something. I feel like I'm watching a Disney movie. How does the Fantasia song go? Obviously, I did something wrong here. Oh, obviously it's bouncing every single time. Well, wait. No, this should be... Oh, no, this is updating. Right, okay, so this needs to happen after we do this movement and all that. Let's see if this works now. <laughs> Chocolate rain? Hot pink rain? 
Oh, we still got this guy dancing rain. It's kind of cool, though. I mean, you know? In its own weird way. It's kind of... It's like the rain is alive. I really thought that would have worked, though, to fix it. I wonder what what's, what's going on here. Why is this code not working? A song for the dancing rain? Is it copyrighted? I'm turning down my volume. Uh, yeah, Dance at the Sugar Plum Fairy. Is that is this what Fantasia? Is this a song from Fantasia? Yeah, yeah, totally. That's the that's the name of that song, huh? Dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy. You don't know Chaka Rain? What's Chaka Rain? What? Chaka Rain's a thing. Oh my god, this guy's 108 million views! <laughs> That's pretty good. 438,000 comments? I gotta check this out in, later in, in, in better detail when I can actually watch the whole video. Okay, so why I'm trying to get the rain to ba to bounce, but not like bounce forever. So why is it not? Why is it bouncing? So it should be blocking any actions until after the sprite. Wait a minute. Let's see what happens if I turn all this off. Because I already added this blocking code to the top. If it's got any actions, it continues. Let's see what happens if I run it now. It should operate as it did before. <laughs> nice. All right, cool. So yeah, it still rains if it's like that. So is there something wrong here where um, it's like it's what must be happening is that it it sets its it runs the action, it sets its vector to zero, but the very next time it gets in here, yeah, of course it does because the very next time it gets in here. It does this again. I guess. Oh, when it renews its vector, it needs to set a position. Oh, wait, no, no, no. Oh, duh. This seems to be if it did reset. Duh. Oh, my God. This whole time. Thanks, Red Sand. Yes. But they're like, they're hitting the ground and dying. 
they don't want to move anymore after they're done. So okay, that's that's a step in the right direction. I want to see this happen, but I <laughs> it's supposed to. Oh. So it needs to renew the vector. Yeah, I guess it doesn't need to re renew the vector up at the top. And once again, we get dancing particles. Damn it. It's a hard thing to code when, you, when you're up half the night before getting the beta update updated. Hmm. I don't know. I might have to take a break and just get some dinner because I'm like all confused now. How long have I been streaming? Hour 40, close to an hour 45. Yeah, I think I'm gonna get going. I'm gonna get some dinner. So, what I, what my goal is next, so this is coming out this little bit here. I'll show, I'll show what, I, what I got accomplished today, basically. It's supposed to, you know, it's, I'm trying to create rain, of course. The color needs to change. The brightness needs to change. Everything about this needs to change. What I'm just trying to work on now is just the mechanics of the rain. So when it when the rain particles fall down, I want them to bounce off the ground, create any puddles if there's already water there, you know, stuff like that. So there's a lot more mechanics to get developed for this rain effect to work. But um or not mechanics, but just more of like, you know, animations to, to function correctly. So as you can see, the rain just bounces once and then it's done. So what I wanted to do is bounce off the ground reset its position, reset its vector so that it can keep falling from the sky over and over and over. And that will be it. So I kind of got to think about how to do that. There's probably some simple stuff I'm missing here, like how to renew this vector just right. So it always helps to take a break. It always helps to take a break and just get some food or go for a walk or whatever. So I'm in a, I'm in a place where I need to take a break. So that is it for today's stream. Anyways, thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll be back um, next time. I'm not sure when next time will be. It might be tomorrow. It might be the next day. And, uh, yep, there'll be more streams for Songbringers. So, cheers, everybody.